of the Korg RK100S Kitar in black. I'm going to show you a demo of using the Kitar in association with the software for making patches, custom patches. I haven't seen any other demos of the software on YouTube yet, so I figured I'd show that to you. Uh, the software is running on a MacBook Pro under OS X 10.11 El Capitan. It runs perfectly under El Capitan, so just thought I'd uh, let you guys know that it is fully compatible with the latest version of OS X. Um, there is also a Windows version um, if you happen to use Windows. Uh, I think it might be cool to use this software on a Surface Pro where you could possibly manipulate the dials and such uh, with your fingers, but I don't, I don't know if those are any good. Um, uh, you could also use an iPad in a remote control mode uh, using one of those softwares that streams video to your iPad to control it. At any rate, um, what I'm doing here is I've got an iPhone connected through the vocoder input of the RK100S. And one of the things about the RK100S that is so nice is that it has a vocoder input because the sound module inside the RK100S is exactly identical to the Korg uh, Micro Korg XL Plus. And of course, uh, so you see here I've got my my iPhone connected and it is running figure uh, and, and here we have the Korg software uh, and what I've got is it it's set up now where I can basically do direct control of the various aspects of the RK100S um, over USB MIDI in real time and so I can kind of craft a patch that I like and here I'm increasing the the mixed uh, direct input from the uh, figure drum machine app. Well, it's more than just a drum machine, it's a little drum sequencer. It's got a, a lead and a bass. And in fact, the lead and bass are turned on, but they're, uh, I don't know what uh, key I had them set to, so I'm just gonna clear those patterns out of the lead and bass so we can just, just use it as purely a drum machine here. Um, there we go. And so, uh, let's add some, uh, some bongos into the mix here a little bit. There we go. Figure is a really nice little tool for this kind of stuff. You know, uh, it really sucks overall as an app because it only has one pattern at a time and there's no way to switch between different patterns, which is a freaking retarded um, design. But, you know, for what it is, it does, it's cool for screwing around, I guess. Um, and so anyway, uh, this, so what we have here in the, is the control panel for the vocoder. Um, I, I'm still kind of learning my way around this for some I've actually messed with it, but uh, what you've got along the bottom edge is uh, an EQ. So you can selectively uh, turn down any frequency uh, in the vocoder um, and you can pan different frequency bands uh, left to right to create different uh, effects, so I think it's kind of cool. Um, you can uh, ch you know, selectively mix the uh, direct level, which is the direct signal that you're getting in through uh, the vocoder input, and which by the way has three different assignable gain levels. Um, obviously coming out of the, the, uh, the iPhone I have it set to the mic, I'm sorry, the uh, line level but if you have a, you can actually run a, a mic directly in uh, into the vocoder input. It's a little eighth-inch uh, stereo jack thing. Um, so then you've got uh, high-pass frequency here. As you can see, I'm able to uh, use that as the gate control. So of course, uh, the way that works is that whatever is coming through the Timber One uh, sound generator inside the RK100S uh, will be gated um, according to the controls of the gate uh, based on what's coming into the vocoder input. So here I'm going to assign the 
a short ribbon modulation control to the filter cutoff. It's also already assigned to a uh, frequency modulation. So what you'll hear now is a neat little effect. I just love this. That's what I'm talking about. So you can do some pretty good sounding stuff with this thing. Um, by the way, the button I just pushed with my thumb was totally unintentional. Um, it didn't do anything. So short ribbon button there being green, uh, that was because I was in modulation mode. When it's red, it's in pitch mode. So now I turned off the arpeggiator that I had, had turned on, and I'm just playing. So I had an arpeggiator turned on in latch mode from the beginning. The arpeggiator is configurable uh, within the software. I haven't shown me configuring it, but it's pretty basic. You know, you're just setting uh, essentially the duration of the notes and the uh, octave range. It's, it's not a very sophisticated arpeggiator, but you know it's there. It's better than not having one. Um, and you can see it's got a tap button to lock frequency in, which I adjusted that before the video began. And so I don't really know what all this stuff does. Here's this formant shift stuff. I mean, it, it lets you kind of change, affect how the uh, formant filter of the vocoder is changing your voice. You can link the uh, filter control modulation source to say like the LFO or whatever. So I'm just going to fade out the song here now. Frequency by frequency. I'm basically doing a, a really slow low pass filter. <laughs> But uh, the cool thing about this that you can't achieve with a low pass filter fade out normally is that each band it's fading out from one ear and then to the other ear, you know, because I have a pan left and right, which is the I don't know, I didn't do that, that's just the default the way they have it patched, I don't know why. So you can still now remember you can when you're fading that down you're still picking up a little bit of direct input. went direct levels all the way off. You can hear it a little bit in the background. It's probably some crosstalk in the thing or something. I don't know. As you can see on our carrier, you can actually have the vocoder just operate on the timbre one and not the timbre two. So it's somewhat configurable. Anyway, that's it. Hope you enjoyed it.